अयं निज परवेति गणना लघु चेत या उदार चरिता नु वसुधेव कुटुंबक विद दिस बैकड्रप ऑफ द थीम ऑफ इंडिया जी ट्वेंटी प्रेसिडेंसी वसुधेव कुटुंबक वन अर्थ वन फैमिली वन फ्यूचर गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल एंड नमस्कार टू ऑल द व्यूवर्स ऑनरेबल प्रिंसिपल प्रोफेसर पी सी अग्रवाल एस्टीम्ड स्पीकर ऑफ टू डेज वेबिनार श्री गजानन लोंधे डायरेक्टर संबित रिसर्च फाउंडेशन बैंगलोर रेस्पेक्टेड नोडल ऑफिसर जी ट्वेंटी आर आई भुवनेश्वर प्रोफेसर लक्ष्मीधर बेहेरा रेस्पेक्टेड डीन ऑफ इंस्ट्रक्शन प्रोफेसर संध्याराणी साहू एंड ऑल हेड्स ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट्स माई कलिग्स रिसर्च स्कॉलर्स स्टूडेंट्स एंड पार्टिसिपेंट्स इट्स माई प्राउड प्रिविलेज टू वेलकम द चेयरपर्सन स्पीकर एंड डेलीगेट्स टू दबिनार ऑन द नेशनल करिकुलम फ्रेमवर्क फॉर फाउंडेशनल स्टेज आई वेलकम द चेयरपर्सन ऑफ टूडेज वेबिनार प्रोफेसर पी सी अग्रवाल सर प्रिंसिपल आर आई भुवनेश्वर सर आई वेलकम टू यू आई वेलकम टूडेज स्पीकर श्री गजानन लोधे सर डायरेक्टर संबित रिसर्च फाउंडेशन हु इज एग्रीड टू बी द पार्ट ऑफ दिस वेबिनार सो वन सेकेंड आई वेलकम टू यू सर एंड एज वी नो दैट जी ट्वेंटी और एज यू नो दैट एन ई पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी हेज स्ट्रांगली एम्फासाइज ऑन द फाउंडेशन स्टेज ऑफ एजुकेशन that three years of preschool and class 1 and 2 the ministry of education has developed the ncf for foundational stage which will be implemented in the country uh, from the academic year 2023 24 so in this context webinar on ncf for foundational stage overview and implementation is of great importance let me introduce the speaker of today's webinar shri gajanand londhe director sambit research foundation bangalore so uh, through Sa- sambit uh, foundation he has published more than 100 books including textbooks for foundational preparatory and middle stages so sambit uh, is recognized as the center of iks that is indian knowledge system and division of ministry of education sri lodhe is a member of technical secretariat for nca and he is the academic coordinator of uh, review committee uh, for foundational stage ncert syllabus and textbooks he worked uh, as a member of national committee for design of itep framework and he is also a member of a research council for iit e gandhinagar so i express my sincere gratitude to sri londhe sir for joining us in the webinar and sparing his precious time and sharing his expertise to make the webinar successful one i would like to uh, request londhe ji to start his deliberation uh, on this topic uh today's webinar so please sir okay thank you so much um, it's really my privilege to be part of this seminar uh, respected uh, prakash ji uh, behra ji and um, all the professors of rie all eminent uh, researchers scholars participants students who are present today so it's really a uh, pleasure for me to talk and uh, share about ncf uh, for foundational stage uh, as uh, you already said you know it's an important step towards realization of our national education policy so i will uh, use some slides so i'll try to present my screen just let me know if you can see it Uh, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Make it full screen, sir. Yeah. 
I will do that. Okay, so you can see the full screen, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Clearly, yeah. me, sir. Considering um, a diverse audience today, uh, we'll have two sections. One is overview of uh, NCF. For I heard that you already had a uh, few sessions on foundation stage uh, from different members, different experts. I'll try to give an overview of the entire framework and then uh, share some thoughts on implementing uh, foundation stage uh, through formal uh, boards and NCRT and also what we can do at different levels. After this, we'll have time for specific questions, uh, what you have, and we can discuss and deliberate on those questions. Okay, sir. Okay. Um, so, as all of us know that uh, national education policy, uh, we got our uh, policy for 21st century India uh, on 29th of July, 2020. Uh, this is first time in our country that a national curriculum framework is uh, followed by a national education policy. So we know that uh, NEP 2020 has uh, many paradigm shifts, recommended uh, changes, key points uh, for school education. NCF is the first step or first concrete step to realize all those paradigm shifts. As you uh, see in the slide here, I'm just trying to reduce this. Uh, can you see my whole screen or you're still seeing my uh, the focus? The whole here? screen is visible now. Yes, 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 sir. Ah, okay. Yeah. For me, there was some disturbance. Okay. Uh, so as we know that um, uh, NCF is the first step for realizing all the paradigm shifts from NEP 2020, the first NCF. Uh, was NCF a foundational stage. So now the NCF was released in October last year. So after NCF was released, the syllabus and textbook, there was a committee and then uh, for foundational stage, uh, which is broken into two steps, uh, age three to six, which is mainly the Balavatika stage or Anganwadi preschool stage. So there was um, a learning resource, the Jadui Pitara was launched in February this year. And then the textbooks for class one and two will be uh, available very soon. So this is the next step after NCF. And then once the syllabus books are available and we already have NCF, the capacity building programs, uh, which RIE Bhuneshwar is also part of, which many programs have been conducted so far. And this is also one of the programs for bringing awareness about the NCF. After all these steps, the real transformation, what, NC, what NEP 2020 has envisioned, uh, will start uh, realizing how we will see those changes in the classroom. So these are a uh, few steps which most of us know. I thought I'll just start with uh, these stages. And also uh, one of the most important changes, uh, what uh, NEP 2020 is recommending is on the structure of education. So from 10 plus 2 to 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. So we all know about it. I just wanted to bring attention to uh, today's talk, which is mainly on the foundational stage, which is 3 plus 2 years, uh, 5 years of foundational stage. NCF uh, this time is done mm, slightly different way than the previous NCFs were done. Earlier, we had the one NCF for school education, which was for class one to 10 and plus two. Uh, this time, there will be four NCFs. The first one will be NCF for foundational stage. That is released in October. The second NCF will be NCF for school education. That uh, the pre-draft of this NCF SE was released last month. And then the final version will be released in July. The third NCF uh, will be NCF for teacher education. So this will be followed in a few months after NCF SC is released. And the fourth NCF is NCF for adult education. This is again happening for the first time in our country that we will have national curriculum framework for adult education. 
So far, our adult education programs were limited to the reading, writing, or the literacy part. Uh, now, this uh, it is coming from NEP and also the NCF will cover various types of literacies. The one is the reading, writing, literacy. Then there is um, financial literacy, there's digital literacy, there's media literacy. So there are different types of literacies which will be involved in adult education. And also there will be a part in terms of how parents' education for development, for holistic development of children uh, will also be part of the adult education. Now we've seen there will be four NCFs. So today we're talking about National Education, uh, National Curriculum Framework for Foundational Stage. A few aspects before we go into what is the curriculum framework, few points. First thing is, this is the first time we are going to have an integrated curriculum framework for age three to eight. Until now we had for uh, the preschool, uh, the ECC part separate and one and two was with, prior, with the primary school. So this is one, uh, important change. Another uh, important change, this NCF is based on latest research across the world in education, in neuroscience, in behavioral science, psychology. So it takes all these inputs. Along with this, it is also rooted in India's deep traditions and knowledge about child upbringing, about knowledge, about schools, about families. So all these things are considered together. And then one very important change we will, you would have already seen by now, uh, the NCF document is not a 50, 60 page document, uh, which used to be earlier. So we used to have a small, uh, more abstract and philosophical document, which was used by the syllabus and textbook committee to realize uh, the vision principles of NCF. But this time you would have seen the foundation stage NCF is 350 plus pages. And the school education NCF is 680 pages. Now it's not on the number of pages, but it is the intent and for whom it is written. So this NCF is written for the teachers as guide for implementing the changes and paradigm shifts recommended in NEP 2020. So it is a practitioner's book. So there are principles and practices. So both are together. So you will see this NCF written in a lot more details, unlike the previous NCFs. So these are some things really important for us to understand uh, before we go into and understand what is the uh, framework one more important aspect about uh, this NCF is the process of making. So far, NCF was written by the committee, by the scholars and eminent educationists. They used to write the NCF document. But this NCF document is written in a democratic way with extensive consultations across the country with different ministries, and there were focus groups formed in each state to write position papers on 15 themes. Around 4,000 experts have written more than 500 position papers. Views from 1,500 plus district consultations. So there were teams formed in different districts. So there were 20 questions for foundation stage. So each group in different districts, they have given 20 uh, answers to 20 questions, which has suggestions uh, from each district, from each diet on how NCF should be. Then there were views coming from surveys, two types of surveys. One was for the teachers and parents and institutions, around 1.3 lakh uh, educate, educationists have responded to these surveys. And there was one public survey. So here it is 10 lakh, but the latest I know is 14 lakh people, citizens, have responded and given their ideas on how, what type of NCF and what type of education we should have. So this entire process was democratic and inputs from all stakeholders and at different levels, from the ground level to the thinkers and scholars, inputs were taken. Now, coming to... Uh, the NCF itself. 
the heart of NCF, you know, the principles, you know, what were the fundamental principles uh, used while writing the NCF. So this slide, you will see a few points uh, to highlight uh, important ones. So the first one, NCF, uh, you know, the core principle is every child is capable of learning. So we should not tag label any child about whether a child can learn or not learn based on the region or any type of response or the, the way child is learning. So this is a fundamental principle. Along with this, there's also another very important principle for foundational stage, which is also applicable later, but in foundational stage, it is more important. And this principle is every child grows and learns at different pace. So we can, what it means for foundational stage education is we cannot have standard learning outcomes expected at you know three, three months or six months or one year. So we should give children the time, the pace, how they want to learn, and also the assessment tools and techniques what we use should also accommodate and consider that every child learns at different pace. Another principle is about how children learn. So children learn by observation, imitate, and they collaborate. And most important thing, as all of us know, in the initial years, we learn through our concrete experience, sensory experiences. So these are important uh, contexts from the principal perspective for writing in CF. And then other very important thing, again, throughout the school, but more important in foundational stage is about the care element. Children, they learn best when they are valued, they're cared, when they're respected, and they're involved in the learning process. So we are not forcing them to learn what we want them to learn. So this is one more very important principle. And then the whole learning happens through play. So children learn, you know, rather we would say children just want two things in one. When we talk of care, it's about safety. So children want to feel safe and secure. And the second thing is children want to enjoy. So children don't come to school to learn, in, especially in foundational stage. They come to enjoy. And they, for enjoyment, they have different types of play. And they do things repeatedly what they like and what they enjoy. And by doing things repeatedly, learning happens. So with this principle, uh, this whole NCF uh, is based on. Apart from this, there is one very important aspect, again, throughout the school uh, education, but more important in foundational stage is participation of parents, family members, and the community in holistic development of children. So these are the core principles uh, for NCF. Okay, this is again, you know, but in the context of NCF, it's important to uh, really um, spell out uh, what this NCF is for. So if we look at the uh, foundational stage in NEP 2020, so it starts with zero to eight years. And uh, then there are two groups, zero to three years, which mainly happens at home. And then three to eight years, it happens in the institution. So this NCF is mostly for the institutional setting. Uh, WCD has created parent manual learning and other material for zero to three years of age. And in three to eight, there are two parts. You know, one is the, the Anganwadi or the Balvatika set, uh, that's for age three to six. And six to eight, that is grade one and two, now it is the, whatever we call in early primary or primary. But these are the components of um, ECCE. So we see these two green boxes, that's what this NCF belongs to. Uh, this slide uh, is one of the most important slides. Uh, it talks about the structure of NCF. Uh, NCF, uh, as we saw the principles which are you know, coming from the uh, child at, at the center, but along with that, there is another principle which is outcome-based learning. So this NCF focuses on uh, defining the learning standards. These learning standards are uh, very structured. So it starts with aims of education, which comes from the NEP. So NEP has given the vision of education and the aims of education. In NCF, we see six domains. And then for 
uh, each of these domains, the most important starting point is the curricular goal. So there are six domains and 13 curricular goals for these six domains. For every curricular goal, there are different competencies which are developed through all the learning process which happens in foundational stage. So there are 64 competencies and focus is on developing these competencies to achieve the curricular goal. So this is the framework or this is the expectation from this framework to measure whether the competency is being developed or not, there are these milestones or markers which are called learning outcomes. So this is the structure of NCF. So you see here on the right side, there's one exemplar. Uh, this talks about one competency where it says converses fluently and can hold a meaningful conversation. So now this is one competency. So there are a few things I want to highlight. One is, you see this at the top, which says age three to eight, and there are no vertical lines in this whole table. And this is how uh, all the competencies and learning outcomes are defined in the framework. Intentionally, there is no partition, which says that age three to four, children should learn this, age four to five, this, five to six, this, six to seven, seven to eight. So there is no hard compartmentalization considering that children learn at their own pace. So different children learn at different pace. So that's where, that's where you see there is a flexibility, but there is an overall guidance given to the teacher on what type of competencies should be developed and what type of markers or learning outcomes we can expect at the end of each year. So these need not be very strictly followed as is. Also, there is flexibility in terms of learning outcomes, where there are many, 200 plus outcomes. Uh, so those can be contextualized by the teacher. Because we can't have one set of measurement and marker throughout the country. So we have the curricular goals and the competencies, which should remain same throughout the country. The learning outcomes can be localized. You know, some fine tuning can happen based on context of the school and the teacher. As um, we saw earlier as, as part of the principle, uh, and also the focus of NEP is uh, holistic development. Because education should be you know, holistic and not just focus on few core subjects. The so NCF for foundational stage has the concept of uh, uh, holistic and integrative learning. There, learning is uh, classified, categorized into six domains, uh, which is also linked with the concept uh, with uh, Indian Bharatiya concept of Panchakoshiya Vikas, uh, development of five dimensions of uh, human being. So those uh, uh, five dimensions are given in the NCF document which goes with the Annamai Kosha, Pranamai Kosha, Manomai Kosha, Anand, the Vidyanamai Kosha and Anandamai Kosha. And then there is uh, a linking to the domains of learning, which is a physical domain, the social, emotional and ethical domain, then cognitive domain, language and literacy development, aesthetic and cultural development and positive learning habits. So you will see this document is structured in these domains, though learning uh, doesn't happen specifically for each domain or each competency, uh, and especially in foundational stage, learning happens in an integrated way. So there is the holistic and integrative. These are the two main uh, aspects which are considered throughout the document. Uh, I've picked up few major areas for discussion today. Uh, first one is about the approach to uh, language education and literacy. Uh, this is also part of the FLN. Uh, I'm sure you, you had some sessions earlier and I know RIE and CRT is working quite deeply on the Nippon uh, Bharat program. So we have seen their FLN and the goals uh, for language learning language and the numeracy part. So these two aspects I've taken uh, in uh, for today's talk. About 
uh, language education and literacy, what NCF is saying. So these are four major steps what NCF is suggesting. So NCF says that child comes to school at the age of three with a lot of exposure to the home language. When a child comes to school, the child already knows how to converse, how to have a basic conversation, how to listen, ask. So these type of things happen in the mother tongue or home language. Education in the foundation stage should continue in the language where the child has already started to do this meaning making and the child is comfortable with. So NCF suggests that the medium of instruction should be child's home language or the child's most familiar language. The reason is child does not have to spend time in understanding or learning one more new language while the child is already learning the language at home. You see here, there are uh, step one and two, they're about language learning, which is mostly the oral language learning. So here, understanding or NCF talks about the oral language learning mostly happens in a very natural way. So children pick up more than one language for conversation. So multiple oral language development, there should be exposure for children. So we need not restrict children to only one oral language or one language in the classroom. And the third and fourth point, they are about reading, writing, and literacy. So this third point uh, talks about the concept of reading and writing should be developed in the home language or the most familiar language which the child has already picked up and which is the mother tongue. And then once the child you know, becomes more fluent, then one more in the, the child should become an independent reader, writer in that language. And the second language can be gradually introduced. So this is about the language. If you have questions, we can talk about it later. Similarly, about numeracy, uh, there are very specific uh, recommendations in the NCF. So for both language and uh, for numeracy, there, there is a four block approach. So for language, there is a four block approach, which is based on balance uh, literacy or balanced uh, learning, and then balanced approach of learning. And then for the mathematics also, there is a four block approach, which is mainly on the ELPS approach, which starts with you know, learning maths through direct experience and then through language and then through pictures and then go to the abstract symbols. Other aspect which is also emphasized in NCF is to link or connect the mathematics learning with the real life and the prior knowledge of the child and not introduce uh, things in an abstract or symbolic way. So these are you know, very important aspects about uh, numeracy. So we can go in detail if we have questions on this aspect. And when we uh, have these stages, foundational stage, preparatory, middle and secondary, uh, it's also important that we don't look in silos. There, were, there is one very important change which we are bringing in foundational stage. And this change is not to look at foundational stage as a pre-primary. What it means, pre-primary or preschool means that children should be prepared for school. So school is expecting children to have some kind of competencies or some kind of prior knowledge and skills. So that should be the focus of preschool. So this is downward extension of the primary. So this NCF does not want. NCF very categorically says foundational education, a foundational stage is a foundational education. There's 85% of child's functional brain development, the neuron pathways and sciences happen by the age of six, seven, eight years. So the foundational learning aspects should happen with concrete experiences in foundation stage. And then from foundation stage, there has to be upward extension to preparatory stage and then going to middle and secondary. So this is one major paradigm shift which is uh, recommended in the foundational stage in CF. So now from foundation to preparatory, how should the shift happen? What is the connect? 
in foundation stage we see learning is more integral and it is based on development of domains so from this there is a move to preparatory stage from this domain based learning to curricular areas and more of interdisciplinary curricular areas learn in foundation stage there is no formal assessment so from there there will be small you know tasks assessment done through uh, small tasks in a little formal way in preparatory stage and then in middle stage and secondary stage there will be full fledged formal assessment so this is the connection from foundation to preparatory now this was a very high level overview and quick overview of ncf i'm sure many of you would have read the full document that was um, capturing the essence of uh, few important topics in ncf now um, we we can look at you know few things about how to implement the most important thing for us to implement is uh, circulars coming from the boards and the uh, ncrt and other agencies uh, where the new curriculum is introduced uh, in the schools the other way to look at it is also identify uh, what are the levels of the changes and what are the types of the changes there are i feel there are many things which can be implemented by the teacher looking at the ncf document itself so we don't have to wait for uh, only board level changes to happen or changes coming uh, from the district or state level so a few things i tried to document here there will be lot many as um, every teacher will look at this ncf document uh, from their perspective and they can localize customize use uh, as things are appropriate for them uh, in their context so two types one is uh, two what are the levels you know we can say classroom level and school level so even there is difference between a teacher can bring in lot of changes at classroom level uh, looking at the ncf document uh, which can be about pedagogy or about the tools they are using or the, uh, even the way they uh, their engagement talk with the with the parents or the teachers or even the way they assess a so lot of things are between the teacher and the student and and that whole learning teaching process so ncf suggests a lot of these things which can be brought in very easily at classroom level and then there are school level engagement with community with parents and uh, some structural things uh, can be brought in at school level and then through district and state level uh, more systematic changes can come in then the type of changes what are things we can really look at to implement in our classrooms in our schools and then you know what comes through the district and the state boards first thing is the new learning standards they are very specifically mentioned so we can look at them and then you know bring those uh, learning standards with six domains and 13 curricular goals and 64 competencies so we can very easily you know, adopt those things in our school then uh, teacher preparation i am sure this session and all the previous sessions what we are doing as part of g20 and ri's initiative uh, the part of teacher preparation more specific preparations can also happen so i have put some thoughts later uh, then development of uh, the learning teaching material uh, jadavi pitara was launched in february this year so it gives some ideas even ncrt has prepared jadavi pitara so those things also can be taken uh, there is a teachers manual as well so teachers handbook for uh, uh, balwatika so that can also be used so teachers can create lot of material for themselves and then as i said about the pedagogy and assessment so a lot of changes can happen so i try to you know, capture few of these things in in the slides the first thing is these are these 13 curricular goals so i'm sure you would have already read this and then for every curricular goal there are expected learning outcomes so those things can be used customized localized uh, this is a picture of the jadavi pitara which was launched in february and i heard there is lot, there are lot of changes which have come in and even more comprehensive and more beautiful jadavi pitara is being developed in ncrt 
So we can definitely take a look at it. And then schools can create their own pitara, districts can create their own pitaras. And that's the uh, beauty of the play, uh, play based learning. It's not just books. So you see in pitara, the toys, there are learning kits, the puppets, the flashcards, the story cards, the posters, books, activity books, a lot of things. This slide has um, some information, but very important things about um, how to select the material based on the, the age of the children in foundation stage. Sensory experiences, direct experiences are very important. So all the material has to be sensorially engaging. It has to be drawn from the local context of the child. We should not bring foreign toys or you know, toys which children cannot link relate to their environment and also the school environment can be print rich where children can see a lot of things and then the decoding happens quite fast. Uh, NCF also talks about a lot of other things. Uh, one of them is like how do you arrange the, the material, the different types of things. So there will be toys, there will be learning kits, there will be stories, there will be songs, there will be riddles, there will be Many other things, including you see this this classroom here, very beautifully painted and decorated, and there are so many learning corners here. So how do we get, collect and arrange this material? So for this, NCF says uh, NCF does not actually recommend any one type of uh, method, like theme based approach or story based approach or something. It says the content can be organized based on the need of that topic. So some topics you can have theme-based approach. For some, you can inter, you know, interweave a lot of things interwoven uh, around the story. In some case, projects or activities can be used. An eclectic approach like mix of these things can also be used. So that's what uh, NCF says that children are different, they learn at a different pace, and the context of teacher is different. Type of learning material used by teacher are different. So judiciously use one of these things and don't get stuck that all the learning has to happen only through one method. If it is theme-based, then only theme-based. So that is what NCF talks about. Also, NCF has given many ways to organize the time. So children will be in the school for four to six hours. So how the time has to be uh, given and then there's some free time and there's some structured time. So how can you play around with this free and structured time? And then uh, there's some learning which can happen in structured way. So there is a weekly, monthly and annual calendar which is given in the NCF, which can be useful as a guide for the teachers. And then um, a very important aspect about the assessment part. Uh, NCF for foundational stage says that there should not be any found formal assessment. And then uh, it uh, states what should be the purpose of assessment, which all of us know that, uh, you know, there are the assessment uh, as learning, for learning, off learning. Uh, so in, in foundation stage, you know, we use assessment for learning. And in this case, we should identify our specific needs, uh, which are also linked with the preferences and interest of the child to identify them developmental challenges, learning difficulties uh, as well. So uh, there's this uh, small cycle here. So you, uh, when we do this assessment uh, through the couple of methods also mentioned, you want to do the assessment, you analyze the assessment, you find the gaps and then you improve your learning uh, of whatever learning, either teaching learning material or your method and uh, the overall learning process and then you again do the assessment and ensure that all the competencies are developed. Uh, for learning methods and tools, NCF recommends uh, two methods. You know, one is uh, systematic observation. Uh, in the systematic observation, many times we feel observations can be lengthy. So there are different types of observations, the checklists and then anecdotal records or even uh, we, the teachers can also develop a, a process for observing few children on specific competencies or specific topics every day and then create a systematic observation record. 
also the artifacts done by the children a trend analysis can be done by the teacher to know how children uh, how development of different competencies is happening in children like example even by uh, seeing the drawing made by a child at the age of 3 and at the age of 4 and 5 we can make out the fine motor control development and we can make out the aesthetic development a lot of things can be uh, assessed by looking at the portfolio of uh, art material done by the child similarly many other uh, artifacts developed by children can be used for assessment this is what ncf um, talks about and yeah this slide is about the pedagogy it's so mainly it just focuses on two three important things first thing is about um, building positive relationship so if child feels very safe secured and feels valued respected and loved then a lot of learning will happen very easily. So this is the first very important aspect at the relationship between child and the teacher. So we have these two terms in, in our tradition. In one we say this uh, Shisha Prema and Guru Bhakti. So that there is a very beautiful selfless loving relationship between teacher and student. And then the other thing it talks about learning through play. Uh, whatever child enjoys, they do it repeatedly. And that should be used as a tool for learning. Then uh, talks about creating you know, positive classroom culture. The children should not get negative impressions or they should not be scared of anything which impacts their learning. Uh, I'll just put this slide, uh, which is important in foundational stage. That is about uh, observation in the classroom about learning difficulties as if foundational stage teacher can identify any type of disability or difficulty or any abnormality in the children early detection is extremely useful in early intervention which will change the entire life of the child so this has to be taken very seriously uh, as one of the most important aspects for foundational stage teacher so there is a specific section in NCF about this. And uh, another important aspect which NCF talks about is the ecosystem, you know, creating uh, partnership with parents, community, using technology. So all these enabling uh, factors. So specifically, I'm sure many, many of us have. Uh, we have this question of how much technology we should use. The NCF talks about use as less technology as possible, but technology can be used for teacher training. And uh, the last thing I've put here is on teacher preparation. Uh, the NCF and NEP also talks about how can we move from the textbook centrality to teacher centrality. So teachers should create things which are uh, very contextual to the to the children in the class to the situation in the class so teacher preparation is most important thing so a few thoughts on this like the self development so all the teachers must read ncffs i know it's a big big volume but it's very useful uh, and then there is the teachers handbook unmuk which is released by ncf uh, so which is released by ncrt so that is also very important self uh, reading self development tool for teachers and then even at the schools and peer learning a lot of things can be done you know they can uh, uh, you know share their learning about this is what i understood from ncf and from the handbook and then they can identify improvement areas plan their changes in the school and all that and i'm sure this type of workshop and many other workshops and tools are available from ncrt scrts diets and other agencies so these are a yeah, few thoughts i had uh, i think from time wise and little over time but that's uh, what i have so i will stop here and hand the discussion to to the anchor those who have joined here and the way you have delivered so in a very simplified manner 
you have delivered the thing and uh, thank you very much thanks a lot uh, uh, hope that audience uh, have developed uh, the understanding on uh, national curriculum framework for foundational stage so thank you very much sir any question or any query um, for this anybody who is interested to ask any uh, question or any query is coming in your mind so you can ask Perhaps no question from any uh, side or anybody. So again, thanks a lot, sir. Thank you very much. Hope uh, that all have developed uh, this understanding uh, on NCF FS as you have highlighted upon the functional uh, part, the process part, and also the structure part. So you have already touched and highlighted each and every uh, bit of the uh, points of NCFS. So thanks a lot, sir. Thank you very much. And now I request to uh, our honorable principal, chairperson of this webinar, uh, to give the conclusive remarks. Sir, please. Sabipa Namaskar. Gajanan Ji, Vishesh Namaskar. So, Sadhya Gajanan Ji and all my learned colleagues and dear participants who are joining this webinar. At the outset, I thank Gajananji for uh, sparing his valuable time to be with us on this very important topic, National Curriculum Framework on Foundational Studies, Overview and Implementation. And uh, uh, he's an expert that way because he's well connected with all the committees and all the developmental process of NCF, even with the coming syllabus and textbooks. And he has touched every aspect of NCF in his very comprehensive deliberation. So the Institute is really grateful to you, sir, for uh, uh, giving your precious time and for deliberation, for your deliberation, for your sharing of ideas and experiences and highlighting uh, the highlights of NCFFS. We are really thankful to you. Actually, uh, he has even uh, explained well about that, uh, how uh, this NCFFS has come out and it is through a democratic process. And he even emphasized that for the first time, this follows NEP. When NCRT has developed even for uh, new uh, for curriculum frameworks prior to this in 75, 88, 2000, 2005. But we did not have any curriculum just after NEP, NEP 86 or NEP 68. But this is following NEP 2020, National Education Policy 2020. And this NEP is highlighting that how foundational stage is important. There are so many research evidences also, but so far our objective was just to enroll students, but we were not qualitatively nurturing them. And they're, they're, that's why this NEP is even uh, showing concern in chapter third, a high rate of dropout. And we need to have a universal access. Now there are several reasons that why there is a uh, big dropout because the environment may not be conducive, may not be compatible for the child. And actually, uh, we, wa we want that bent of mind of child should be as per our Indian culture and ethos. And that's why we want to nurture them at early age. And research evidences are also there. So foundational stage is, is the most important stage that way because unless foundation is strong, we cannot build on foundation well or good preparatory stage, middle stage and higher stages, even technical and higher education. So we have to hit uh, we have to look rigorously at the foundational stage. We have to uh, orient child so that the learning is joyful. He elaborated this that uh, learners learn at different pace, at their own pace, and they should enjoy learning or they should enjoy in classrooms or they should enjoy in balvaticas. 
they are coming for joy not for learning especially in foundation stage learning they will have a by product or a side uh, uh, side outcome but their basic objective is to play with activities there are multi level uh, multi multi ways of working they are in balwatigas peer uh, sitting with peers and interacting with them will even increase their uh, foundational literacy when we say literacy when speaking of avenues are there opportunities are there new vocabulary will be learnt mutually and communication will definitely increase so uh, foundational stage is that's why very important and uh, as we all know even ncert faculty even our ra faculty was involved in all district level consultations state level consultations in digital platforms for collecting opinions of different stakeholders so the democratic way we have taken to build or to come out with this document ncfs for the first time ncert has been interested responsibility to develop ncf uh, in four different areas ncfs ncfsc ncfte and ncfe as he elaborated and ncfe is not limited or restricted only to just literacy and numeracy but we talk that they should live their life with full degree financial literacy they should have digital literacy they should have media literacy uh, legal literacy etc so adult education is also very important because we want to realize the goals of sdg 4.0 where lifelong learning and learning for all equitable inclusive quality education must be there so each one or every citizen we has to uh, cater his needs or needs and they should have opportunities to learn throughout their life and therefore uh, this ncfs uh, which we have from uh, october 2022 with us with so many uh, curricular goals or domains competencies learning outcomes etc and even in ncf fs ncf se again we will have certain ideas of ncf fs because ncf se will be holistic that way from 0 to covering all the stages 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 but since foundation stage we have to specifically cater that's why this ncf fs has been emphasized and has been brought out separately and even in nep uh, it is being uh, emphasized that we should have a curricular curriculum e structure framework even for 0 to 3 age of children because uh, guardians or parents they should know that how to uh, grow their kids their child so th these will be just in form of guidelines for different stakeholders but from 3 to 8 3 to 6 and 6 to 8 we have now formal curricular fra curriculum framework with us and this is just framework uh, many of uh, my colleagues especially students they have problem the difference in curriculum and curriculum framework curriculum framework gives us opportunity to contextualize it flexibility is there we can contextualize as per our needs and we can design curriculum accordingly state specific needs or local specific needs or district specific needs so we can bring all these things and that's why this ncf fs in our system india where we have uh, both governments working together state and center liberty must be there so this liberty is there and he highlighted all the guiding principles of ncf fs uh, and it is really very uh, important or uh, it, it is really uh, very meaningful talk deliberation because we as teachers educators we as ri people have high responsibility to uh, make uh, masses aware about this ncf what are the characteristics what are the salient features of ncf how it updates us with new developments with recent developments and how we can bring these changes at the grass rate, grass root level how we can implement it whether it is pedagogy perspective whether it is assessment perspective different perspectives he has highlighted i think he has a large number a lot, uh, many slides with him but he has cut down many slides because these were not in sequence i found uh, point 8 was there then 15 point was coming out so uh, he has tuned his uh, interaction as per the time he had but he highlighted all these things 
So he elaborated fundamental principles. As we all know that ECC is very important. And sir, I would like to uh, uh, bring in your notice that in RIs, especially in four DM schools, we have DM schools attached with RIs. In four DM schools, we have this early childhood parent education. Uh, long back, uh, around 10 or 12 years back, it was of one year, then it became of two year. And from this year, we have uh, tuned this ECC as per the NEP and now, we have three years ECC in our DM school. So uh, since we are actualizing uh, these things here in our schools with children, so it is very important for all of us to know that what are the salient features in NCFFS and how we are going to implement at least in our schools. And then we will learn more and it will even help us in uh, awaiting others in, in uh, capacity building of teachers since our institute uh, is an institute where we run both pre-service teacher education programs as well as in-service teacher education programs where we have teachers and teacher educators from different states, from different parts of country and where we have such sessions. So uh, we, should, we should be empowered first and now we are empowered to a great extent and definitely we are going to uh, further all these things to our trainee teachers to whom we will come across in coming days. So now we have an idea of six domains, 13 curricular goals, 64 competencies, and uh, how uh, flexibility is given in competencies because three to eight earlier, uh, I have worked with uh, minimum levels of learning system, but their year-wise uh, competencies then sub competencies were there for class three competency set, then for class four set. But now from class three to eight, there is one set of competencies and horizontal mobility can be there. No age restriction is there because the logic is that child learns at their own uh, pace. So we cannot restrict that they will learn this much in three and then this much in six. So th that way, uh, horizontal mobility is given, vertical mobility is not mentioned, classification is not given, age-wise restriction is not there. So we came to know all these things. We all know that aims of education, unless we know the philosophy, what is aim of education, we cannot take the documents, the policies in right perspective. So we should know that what are the aims of education, what are goals and competencies and ultimately what we want to achieve in terms of learning outcomes. Uh, so he elaborated these things very, very, uh, in, in a very precise manner. Uh, he connected these curricular goals with our Indian philosophy punch post. Uh, he spelt about all the these courses, Anname course, uh, Pranamaya course, Manome course, Vigyan may cause, Anand may cause. And even this uh, uh, NCFFS highlights about Panchpadi also. So we need holistic development. Our philosophy uh, believes in holistic development of a learner and whether it is socio-economical, physical, mental, whatever. So we have connected all these things with our indigenous knowledge system, with our Indian philosophy, with our, with our philosophy. And, and uh, whenever we talk about NCFFS or foundation stage, then literacy and numeracy becomes very, very important. Our, most of the reports, whether and even the surveys, whether this is national achievement survey or conducted by NCRT or whether international surveys, all these are highlighting that our children are very weak as far as literacy and numeracy are concerned. And unless these foundational requirements are fulfilled, literacy and numeracy are there, basic literacy, early literacy and numeracy are there, we cannot think that child will move or will move further with joy because unless they are, they are good in all these uh, the basic skills, they will not feel uh, uh, interested in moving further in this era. So that's why literacy and numeracy are very, very important. And in literacy, all the basic skills are required. In literacy, when we talk about creativity, creativity, one has to express. And again, language is 
required. Numeracy gives logical understanding, basic structures, patterns, all these things. So we all know all these things, but how to implement these things? What are the basic things which we have to focus upon? And this is given uh, in this document NCFFS and that's why it is in elaborated way, more than 300 pages because not only pages are important, but certain illustrations, examples are given because it has been observed after NCF 2005 that even teachers of urban area, teachers who have interaction with teacher educators, they don't know even that what is there in NCF 2005. Many a times, even they don't know guiding principles. We want that this document should reach to everyone, to the grassroots table, to every teacher. That's why there should be a plenty of examples, illustrations, simple ways of expression so that one can internalize the philosophy, one can uh, use it for uh, in the, for in the uh, classrooms with different stakeholders at the grassroots level. So uh, how implementation we can do, what type of changes are required, what type of capacity building of teachers are required, what, how teacher has to uh, move or pace, have to uh, go with all these things, self-learning, self-development, peer learning, how peer interaction is important, even how workshops in workshops, the common forums, platforms empower teachers. Even sharing of experiences and ideas are very important. So all these things were explained very uh, rightly in very perfect manner by him. Jadoi Pitara, and we all know about LTM, what is the use of learning teaching material, especially at this age, because we want that a child should learn. And our intention is not learning. Learning is a byproduct, should do certain activities, should play with others, should enjoy with others. And in this, uh, uh, engagement, a child will uh, derive certain experiences, certain knowledge, knowledge will be built, knowledge will build automatically. So different activities are there. We all know in, even in uh, our rural context, we all know that how toys are important, how puppets are important, how uh, different uh, artifacts are important. So these, when they are uh, provided a child to interact with a child definitely makes definitely learns many things so then he will make up so many things so he explained about all these things i'll i'll not take much time we all know that how toys are important and we should not in name of toys we should not bring chinese toys or american toys because that child will not feel connected with those toys a child should feel connected should know that uh, this is this environment is own environment. If we bring a child in the unfamiliar environment, again, learning gap will be there, earning withdrawal tendency will be there, earning. Uh, so these all uh, things will come in. So how the local things, how the local flavor, how the local context, we should bring in our uh, teaching learning process in terms of LTM or even other terms. That child should feel connected, child should feel that these things are his or her own things, learning is derived. We all know about even stories. We have learned so many things from stories in moon nights, how our grandparents used to tell us stories. And as children, we were making uh, outcomes of those stories. What is the moral? If we thief something, then what happens? How it is, it is not good, it is not unethical. If such mind is, uh, some, such, such type of pattern is built in children in proper age or at the uh, early age, then child will come up, will grow up as a very good global citizen. We all know. So he explained all these things. I'll not repeat what he has done, but many material we have already developed and unmuk type of thing. And even teacher can develop her, uh, her own material so that foundational literacy, numeracy, even different aspects, age appropriate, but are available to the uh, children. Teachers' capacity building is very, very important this way because unless teacher feels empowered, teacher's capacity is there to bring out such material which is very useful, which is uh, compatible, which is age appropriate, then 
the learning will not take place the way we want. So implementation of the characteristics of the salient features is very important. And for that, teach stakeholders should feel empowered, should, uh, uh, should undergo capacity building. And uh, for that, NCID's role is very, very important, especially RI's role is very important because RIs are not only responsible for conducting pre-service teacher education programs, but their major part of work is empowering teachers and teacher educators, especially teacher educators or especially master trainers or especially key resource persons. So uh, I, I would request uh, to all of my colleagues that we have to learn, we have to know every bit, every word of this NCFFS in its true spirit, only then we will be able to work as appropriate teacher educators for teachers. So uh, with all these uh, remarks, I once again thank uh, Gajananji for uh, mesmerizing us, for uh, expressing all the salient features of NCFFS. And actually, I could not read the entire document, but now I have uh, a type of understanding that what about this NCFFS is. So I thank him, I thank coordinator that she took pain and all my colleagues who made this webinar possible since uh, I was not here, I could not talk to Gajaranji, but I'm very uh, grateful to him for his generosity that he accepted our uh, invitation to be with us in this uh, webinar and uh, shared his thoughts, his experiences, experiences of working with all these technical groups uh, with all the curriculum framework, developmental system pro process with textbook and uh, he has a lot of uh, understanding, good understanding about that. And we could learn many new things and I would have been very happy that if students or my colleagues would have interacted with him with certain questions, because uh, I think we will not be having this type of opportunity again. So though it is my concluding remark, but still I request uh, those who are joining this webinar, if they want to interact, they want to even comment, even, even they want to give any suggestion, even they want to share any experience, I request uh, them that they can come forward, but uh, uh, time we have to keep in mind. The questions or the comments should be very precise, but uh, we can definitely learn more by interacting with Gajamanji. So with these words, I am concluding with thanks to one and all and a special thanks to Gajamanji. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you very much uh, for your integrative thinking uh, by recapitulating and adding your own thoughts in a very systematic and a meaningful, organized and uh, in an effective manner. Thanks a lot, sir. And uh, it is very much beneficial to each and everybody. So each and every uh, viewer Will be the uh, will be, will be benefited out of this discussion, sir. So thanks a lot, sir. Now, uh, anybody, even uh, as principal sir said, anybody who is interested uh, to ask anything, sir is also here. Gajanan sir is also here. So you can take the advantage of that by asking any question. No one is there, perhaps. So now I would like to request to Nodal Officer Professor Lakshmi Behra to propose the vote of thanks. 
So very good afternoon and namaste to all of you. Uh, so it is an honor to have the opportunity to propose a vote of thanks. So uh, I am grateful and I uh, thank uh, Sri Gajanan Lodhe sir uh, for his valuable presentation on national curriculum framework for foundation studies, overview and implementation. And all your presentations are beneficial for all the participants because as you know, the participants were from diverse backgrounds. So faculty members, research scholars, teachers, diet functionaries, and uh, school teachers were there. So they have been benefited. So thank you very much, sir, for uh, accepting our invitation and uh, joining this webinar. Thank you very much. So I thank our principal, sir, for his guidance. And always, so this is the series of activity and uh, we have conducted by today's activity. It is the fifth activity related to webinar on foundational literacy and numeracy. Already we have conducted uh, FLN uh, and blended learning perspective, teacher preparation, pedagogy and assessment. Similarly, in one of the sessions on, uh, conducted last 9th of this month, so there was a session on uh, storytelling based pedagogy as well as multilingual context. So in all these programs, sir has guided. And thank you very much, sir, uh, Professor P.C. Agrawal, sir, for your uh, concluding remarks. And it was very comprehensive. So I thank uh, our Dean of Instructions, all the heads of the department, the faculty members, research scholars, and all the delegates, participants, those who have joined this webinar. So I thank uh, the ICT studio uh, nodal officer, Professor Ramakan Mahalik sir and his team, because they have supported, facilitated for this program. I thank uh, all other members, the coordinator, Dr. Rasmi Rekha Sethi, madam, for uh, coordinating the program uh, within a short span of time and coordinating the program very systematically. So I thank uh, all the members, those who have directly or indirectly helped. I thank uh, the IQAC coordinator because this activity is also one of the IQAC initiatives, Professor Rita Nilidas, ma'am, for her guidance. I thank all those who have directly and indirectly helped for completion and successful organization of this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Namaskar to all the viewers once again. Sabi ko